It's a superorbital approach and it's a bit um, due to our history of the, our department. Um, what's about this is that you really th think about your surgery before planning your approach, what you really want to do. It's not useful to, to really try to make a small incision or a craniotomy. For example, if your lesion is quite uh, superficial, it won't work. Yeah? But the deeper the lesion is, you can perhaps choose if it's appropriate a minor uh, craniotomy. But even if you choose a minor craniotomy, it should be tailored. Yeah? It's, it's really, you can't uh, let the, the job somebody doing, which is not um, really absolutely uh, informed about the patient, the lesion, how do you want to do it. And the Kehoe concept says, okay, you choose a certain size of the craniotomy and then you make uh, the craniotomy wider in terms of visualization that you drill the inner, the tabula interna. Yeah? So that makes the uh, excess for visualization and even for handling in the depths. But what we think it's good to deal is that you re it's the cellar region, yeah, it's the planum, um, it's a tuberculum. The olfactory region, um, uh, we are not sure about this. We use it less, yeah, we, uh, because if you go from this position and you have, to, even if you drill the orbiter, uh, it might be difficult to have total visual control for the olfactory region. So, and what we do about, uh, uh, with this approach in general, it's the aneurysms and mainly it's a subfrontal approach, yeah? This is really, that has to be, the, don't deal with the lesions you would never do with, with a subfrontal approach. It's really, that's the, the key topic about it. It replaces in described circumstances the standard frontal approach and um, we see it later in the video, uh, as you see, it, this is the incision you have to preserve the superorbital nerve you should and it's, uh, it's sufficient or if you make one burr hole. What kind of anatomy uh, do we deal? Of course you have to know the supra linea temporalis uh, superior. You will deal with the periobicular um, uh, muscle. You have to do an incision of the temporal muscle. These are the main landmarks. After we did a skin incision we mainly detached the temporal muscle on a very short distance and make a kind of U-shaped incision of the... What may be uncomfortable morbidity with this kind of approach is if you make injury to the frontal sinus. Yeah? And because the approach is so minimized, sometimes you even don't see if you made a, a slit-like lesion on it. So the patient has CSF, rhinorrhea, and you can't even imagine that you made it from your craniotomy, but it's evident and we really have to care about it. And the most simple, of course, you can use neural navigation for this, but in general, you can palpate the frontal sinus, yeah? It's, it's easy and you have, to, you have to respect it. It's really, it's a pity if you make a nice uh, uh, surgery with a, a minimized approach, but the, uh, you have to do a redo surgery uh, because of CSF leakage and a frontal sinus injury. This is where we uh, place the burr hole, and this is the first cut. It should be really as low as possible that you really make an osteoplastic chronotomy and don't have to drill too much of the bone so that you're parallel to the uh, of the roof and we complete it like this. So, And what's perhaps important is not only the supraorbital uh, nerve, but you have even some uh, motor uh, branches of the facial nerve so that there is a risk with this approach like with a lot of uh, approaches that you may cause a uh, facial uh, weakness um, for the uh, frontal branch. And the preparation is, we talked about planning, you should in general, for example in our department the surgeon has to do the positioning uh, himself. And that means in case of the supraorbital um, approach you have to think about what kind of uh, lesion do you uh, want to tackle. For example, if you want to go for an MCA aneurysm, which is quite lateral, you, here's the opening and we choose rather a slight rotation, perhaps yes, 15, 20 degrees maximum. Yeah? So this, that the surgeon may really comfortable. So the place of the craniotomy is about here and I want to have a straight vision on it and I want to go to a lateral pathology. There's only a slight tilting of the head, but the more I want to go medially, yeah, the more I have to tilt the, the head. Yeah, for a comfortable position. Yeah, if I don't do it uh, properly, then I have to stand like this to see it right. And this is the only thing you can really make wrong about the uh, positioning. It's also important to gain a good visualization is that you have to. You see there, 
are always um, the orbital roof is never plain, yeah, and there be, may be sometimes really a, a severe hypostosis, which may make a straight visualization, for example, of the cellar region or even the planum impossible. And what you have to do is that after you made a really parallel incision um, uh, uh, of the craniotomy to the orbital roof, you have to drill the orbital roof a bit flat, get off all these um, bony uh, ridges to have a direct access. Uh, for example, for the planum. Now, this is essential. If you don't do this, you can't use this uh, approach uh, properly. And it's always done uh, extra dural. If you don't do this, then you have to do an orbital zygomatic uh, version of this approach. That means extra dural while holding the uh, suction or even using additional suit. You, this is, yeah, here you have the orbital roof, and it's what I said initially. You have to really to make the orbital roof flat. Yeah, and sometimes you even see some uh, periorbiter. And this is a case of an uh, MCA aneurysm. So it's in general we try to, yeah, mm -hmm. in general you can stay within the eyebrow. If the patient has no eyebrow, we rarely choose it out. We think it's an ideal approach. And what we always do is draw. That means, what do we draw? We draw the incision, yeah. We draw the burr hole, the linear temporalis. We draw what is the expected size of the craniotomy and in this case the, the craniotomy ends where the frontal sinus um, has its maximum extension. Yeah? And this is what, what you need and this, uh, you can extend uh, the skin incision a bit laterally because in general it's cosmetic, uh, the cosmetic results are good if you stay within these uh, folds. Okay, it's, it's about a four centimeter skin incision, four to five centimeters which is planned. We use sutures in general with retractors, with the fish hook is also okay, but with retractors you take too much space, it's, it's, it's not suitable very good. So the linear temporalis which is incised, we make a kind of U-shaped muscle incision. Linear temporalis, so we will place the burr hole about here. And it's good if you, from that position, it's a small burr hole, just take the kerosens and go as close as possible to the uh, uh, orbital roof. And you need the help of an assistant which really moves the skin so the, that you can make an adequate uh, bony exposure. And again, it's really it's, it's for subfrontal root and it's not for superficial. Um, pathologies. It's only in, at the surface you don't have uh, good exposure, it's only in the depth. And now that's, uh, this is the step where we try to remove all the, um, yeah, to, to improve the bony exposure. So you make it really flat to the of the roof, and with a diamond drill, you remove the yeah, the bony ridges of the orbiter. Then you make a. In this case, it's we made a puncture of the ventricle. It's just perpendicular um, to the surface. If it's um, it's it's not difficult. We try to avoid lumbar uh, drainage, I don't know, it's... And you have to take some time with this approach. That means uh, always uh, wait for CSF release. Um, um, you, you can't force it. Hmm? And this is optic nerve. And then you get nicely the CSF and everything is, is quite comfortable.
Is there a diamond knife? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The better one. The good one. He sent it back to the manufacturer. <laughs> Looking so good. See, not why not gold and why you want to So you see, you have a nice exposure. It's not that you have uh, no place to work, but it, you have to take some time for a CSF release. You have to take your time for the rock nidal uh, dissection, and then you see the uh, aneurysm. You can't, uh, um, you are able to split um, the sieving fissure from a reverse. You now see now the, the aneurysm. This should be the temporal branch. And in general, we use this for the standard uh, Sugita uh, clips. We don't use this inverse clipping system from Planetsky. It depends, so only in really small uh, aneurysms. And for control, we are now are lucky to have these ICG uh, systems to, but in general we do a Doppler to really control. Micro Doppler, I think it's quite affordable and it's easy, it's straightforward. ICG is of course nice, but we have only one microscope which is working with that. And sometimes you may, may even to uh, replace. Like in this case, there was some, some compromise. And it has become a little bit later in time. Okay. This is ICG, but it's only an additional tool. It's all dissection with microscope. Yeah. So we make uh, may make an endoscope be assisted uh, clipping, yeah. yeah, and because you said you make a kind of a variation of this approach, so you make a just the reconstruction of the dura and perhaps I just can skip this. Yeah, we take two one of these clamps. And that's it. So but yeah, you have to, uh, to do a good case selection and especially uh, it must be a legion which is uh, just appropriate for, for tackling this. We do most of the um, aneurysms, uh, ACOM aneurysms uh, with this, uh, plant spinodal and meningiomas are tackled by uh, this approach. Okay, you can even see control of the MCA and this is um, a standard case which we use it for, yeah. but. To be honest, this would be perhaps today a case we would think about doing transnasal endoscopic because there's some extension uh, to the cella, to baculum. If it's just behind, outside of the line of sight, it may be possible that we today would do it with our endoscopic uh, transnasal route, but we are reluctant in general. We've, uh, the post of care is much more intensive in uh, doing transnasal uh, resection, so we still uh, use in most cases uh, craniotomy. Okay. Yeah, cosmetic results, of course, after the people are like this, day two and three, but their uh, cosmetic results are, are quite good. But what are the associated uh, complications? Frontal numbness, yeah, even if you think you preserved the supraoblast nerve, uh, even palsy, that incomplete, yeah. In most cases, it's after the surgery, but within some months, it's uh, recovering full. What I said about the CSF Ryan rear, really, uh, take care about your frontal signs, take a dissector and see if you open it. And if you have to do a redo case, it's not, of course, it's not nice, yes. It's quite, quite visible, but it's, it's rare. And yeah, I think we, we talked about uh, that we have to really choose our uh, case quite good. Okay, thank, thank you. you.